Hello, everybody. It is almost, it is 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern. What time is it in the Netherlands? It is uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon, so uh, they already have halfway. All right, so it is Nava Berg here in Social VR, Facebook Spaces, an online platform where you can connect with people all the way to Netherlands. And this is David DeJong. He is a VR OG. He's been around the block and he is currently a VR advisor for the elderly community in healthcare. So yes. um, welcome. It's so great to hang out. We're sitting here. Yes, the... Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're sitting here. Um, this is a 360 image of Castle Hoensbroek. It's the largest medieval castle of the Netherlands. How cool is that? <laughs> um, and it's by Amazing. Three, 360 do by 360 today. So I'm here with, again, if you're just coming on, I'm here with David DeJong. And hi, Amri Campion. Do you know him, Amari Campion? Um, he's joining us live. We are here to be talk talking hi. to David DeJong. Uh, VR advisor for the healthcare community and the elderly. So, you know, jumping in, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in virtual reality? Um, so my experience in general in gaming or elder care? I would say um, um, like from the beginning, so yeah. Like how you got started. Like how I started? Yeah. So... Also, maybe some people know me as the business manager of Nati. Uh, he's also my brother. And I think we started like six or seven years ago with the DK1. So DK1, we bought a DK1 awesome. and we just played with it and we tried many demos and we're still, still like in development, like VR. And in the first years, it was just like for fun, trying stuff. But then later, I think maybe three years ago, then there was more in healthcare. There was more interest like in VR. So I think it started like four or five years with like exposure to therapy, uh, coming from the States, um, trying to recover associates with PTSD with uh, VR. So then I did my research from my uh in the healthcare space, like what is going on in the Netherlands, who's using VR, where they use it for. So that's how I start a little bit, and then after like two years, um, then like it was more like a consumer product, like the Rift. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I saw more and more also elder care, but also other institutions in the Netherlands to use VR and experiment with it. So only they really took it, it took off when they got like more consumer product. Wow, that's so that's great. how I got started a little bit. Um, well, we have um, actually your brother's on on live with us right now, and Omari Campion said hello. hello. See you over there. Um, so, you know that's so interesting. You know the way you started out. Yeah, here we could show it to everybody else here. In virtual reality, the coolest part of going live in Facebook Spaces is you can actually see three D <laughs> comments when people are commenting in two D. How cool is that? I mean, the technology, like Very you cool. said, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just growing so fast. And, you know, being in the elderly community, I mm -hmm. love old people. And um, actually, you have a picture of one of your, um, one of the patients where you um, advise that it's mm -hmm. just such an amazing thing to be able to do that. I mean, I was so intrigued when I saw some of the pictures that you were posting um, on, on what you do in and to help these people because what is it like when you're helping them and you're you're there and you're letting them see vr for the first time like already like when you show show elderly vr for the first time it's for them imagine this is a generation uh, i work with who didn't grow up with technology right also a lot of them in their uh, working uh, experience they didn't work with computers uh, maybe in, in the end of their careers, maybe they had some uh, experience with computers, but not that much. So for them, like wow. most of them don't use a smartphone. Some now try to use a smartphone or have like a, a tablet that's like compatible for elderly. So for them, like stepping into like already like games or gaming, but then being in a different environment for them, wow. it's just, it's really, really, really great. So it's really... 
the first time you put them in VR, it's first a bit fascinating. So I most of the time when I do a uh, uh, when I bring everybody together, I do it in a group. Um, so because then I ask who wants to go first, and there always this elderly who really want to go first. You always have these people in groups who say like, like I want to go first. I want to jump in. I love that. Uh, and then yeah, and then the rest just like just sees like what is this thing and they say like i don't have any knowledge of computers um, <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they say like they, they look at it and say like oh that, that looks very complicated it's very complicated isn't it <laughs> and the, the moment they step in they, they really really enjoy themselves oh i'm sure and it's really cool so where do you take them when you take so them one, in like when you when you when they do VR? yeah so yeah so i when i started i tried to figure out what experience they like uh, so I also use like 360 like videos, uh, but also for example Nature Tracks VR or uh, Perfect from Ed and Dreams. And apparently they really like the nature thing, and I see them trying to like engage. And hmm. also they like to go back to places they remember. So oh. they don't necessarily want to go to like new places. Most time places from back in the day, but there are some stories that people want to go to a place they've never traveled to. Uh, so yeah, for them it's really complicated to now uh, when you're like many years old and you live in an elder care home, Aww. you don't have the ability to travel to places you always wanted to go to. Plus, it's a different time and age. We just hop in a plane and go somewhere. But that's a generation <laughs> right. who couldn't fly and go somewhere. So yeah, for them it's really amazing to go to places they've never been or go back to places. And there's a really cool story that there was this elderly woman who. Uh, went into VR and I put her in uh, Perfect from End Dreams and she was in some, on top of the mountain and she looked around and she cried because she said, like, this reminds me of when I was living with my husband in my Aww. 20s uh, in, in Switzerland and it really made her feel that she was back and she was telling all the stories. That's like the cool thing about like VR. It's like a tool to uh i think improve like well-being so start yeah. a story so the moment she went in there then she was speaking about all these stories she she experienced there and did there and saw there and before she would never start a conversation by herself in that kind of sense so yeah. wow you're probably the sparking really amazing stories you're sparking joy in people that don't have as much joy uh, my friend mindy's on she also loves yeah. old people she used to actually her best friend is hi mindy is like um, 80 years ah. is 80 years old, so she definitely gets this and what it can do for, I mean, happiness. You're really you're mm, you, yeah happiness. You're changing their day. Like they probably after they're done. Yeah, and then yeah, I mean, go ahead. And then in in, in 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 the Netherlands, or I think like in, in uh, there's a lot of like I think also in Europe and developing countries, a lot of like loneliness among the elderly, mm. and that's why like now our uh, government uh, has some funding for improve the well-being of elderly, and I think like VR can be like a big thing, like in improving the well-being. Um, just what I said, you can just sit in your chair and go around the world or go to places you went before just to experience things and and you really have a, it's a personality so you really have a feeling you're there you do and for them it's just like it's it's really magic i'm sure it's, it's mind-blowing for them um amari yeah. amari campion said he does the same with his parents and his girlfriend's parents mm, yeah yeah i mean even just your parents really nice. somebody that doesn't go into vr or has never tried so in the picture that i see they um, here's another picture. Um, you had mentioned groups, so I took a picture. Um, that's one of your pictures of your groups. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us about this? What is she wearing and um, how does this start off? I love all their faces here. <laughs> um, so... Is, I can't really see the picture. Oh yeah, so that's... Um, oh, that's right. So that's the <laughs> Oculus Rift. So there's a yeah. bunch of ladies at the table. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is the, the, the lady of uh, 100 years old. 100 years and old? 100 years old. Wow. It's the oldest person I ever got into uh, VR. And she, it was funny because like she, I think it's uh, the, the blue 
what she's in, the experience she's doing. And she was really like, like she, she communicated with the, because we did the one with the jellyfish. <laughs> and the jellyfish came at her and she was like talking to the jellyfish and having a lot of fun with it. And so it was really, really cool experience for her. And she, yeah, this is just amazing. And then the experience and how she really, because she was sitting in a chair being like a, like a really quiet. But the moment she got in, she was like moving with her hands and trying to touch the jellyfish. And so that's also very interesting to see. Like a lot of elderly want to interact with the with the, the animals and the things around them. Wow. You know, it's interesting that you said the blue because um, Adam Bruce, um, who's uh, Eva Leon from ARVR Women, um, he produced mm -hmm. the yeah. the blue at in Los Angeles, the experience. In, um, at West ah, yeah, yeah. Westfield, um, so it's really cool uh, I, that I, I learned a lot about the blue and, and VR experiences, and how it creates empathy mm -hmm. and teamwork. So I can't imagine what it creates for these people who are a hundred years old. Like what? A hundred years old? That's amazing. So yeah, um, but that's also also a generation who never snorkeled, never scuba dived. Wow. They never went into like what I said. We we're a generation who can go scuba diving, go snorkeling. Right. And this is a generation who who never most of them never had that opportunity to try and do things like that. You're a game changer for them. I mean, you're giving them experiences. I try, I try. <laughs> They, I mean, you're creating footprints in their life. That's so unbelievable. That's what you call VR for good, everybody. Um, so yeah. how, so you had mentioned like how VR is helping that community. Um, how can other nursing homes use this and how can they reach, you know, someone like you who can help them build a program like this? Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what other nursing homes can do is just, to already just start with like VR and just like not basic experiences, but just uh, experiences the elderly. What I experience is like the really like nature, uh, just quiet things. Don't put them in a row. Look, it's a really big tip. <laughs> Unless somebody is really adventurous. Right. Um, yes, just start easy. Just buy what what I recommend a lot of uh, institutions in the Netherlands. Just buy an Oculus Go. It's it's not a very expensive product. Right. Just buy an Oculus Go, uh, get Nature Tracks VR, for example. It has a lot of different experience experiences. Mm -hmm. um, just try and start. Now I I'm doing like a program with three uh, nurses who receive the headset so they can use it at home. Oh wow, great! And they now are figuring out like I gave them a headset. And it's interesting to see where you, like just go directly to the LED and you know, to say, oh, maybe we should write a program. To work with it so it's really finding a way how does it fit in your daily work as a nurse because you have you're a caregiver so most mm -hmm. of the time you are focused on caring and how can VR fit in your daily schedule because it's it's in an analysis fair that it is in elder care it's not they have extra time right so so just finding a way what, what moments you want to uh, you can use VR and also now because we are doing already research for almost a year. Wow. Uh, so we have a lot of experience of what kind of experiences are doing very well. And hopefully in future create content for elderly people because there are no applications made in the store like specifically for elderly. Wow, that's so a good point. So now we're really trying to do research. What do they like? Yeah. So based on the design research, we try to co-create together with them. What do you like? What do you dislike? So to find a solution and find new content for elderly. Wow, so not only are you creating these experiences as in like, you know, building these programs for people to get into with the elderly community and the nursing homes, but you're also looking to create content and co-create content no. that's specifically tailored no. to them from the feedback that you've been getting. That's brilliant. I love that. Yeah. So that must feel so, so good. To do. And like it's very it. good. And, and also, like, the, the, the bigger picture is because, v, like, VR is still, like, even though, like, mm -hmm. for example, Oculus Home, uh, it's great for gamers, but for nurses and elderly, it's still quite difficult. So we're also looking at ways how can we make it easier for them, accessible, because, like, the interface is for a lot of people too complicated to dive into experience. So it's, like, a boundary, and that's what we don't want. We want right. VR to be accessible for everybody. Um, Absolutely. And then now we're also like trying to like, how can we 
get all our nurses to get experience with VR, wear a headset, touch it, how do you put it on, how do you put it off? So that's like a long-term goal to give them that experience and that knowledge to work with it. And then you also receive like a lot of feedback. Absolutely. Uh, so it was, uh... Well, this picture is just one of my favorite pictures, just because knowing now that, that this lady is a hundred years old and you brought her into VR, I mean, I can't imagine yeah, it's amazing. what her, what she was talking about with all those girls there after. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Got some love. Oh, um, James Matthews um, joined in. Hi, Jake or Jake Matthew. Um, so, a hundred years old was your oldest, um, and you're creating content. Mm -hmm. Recently, you went, um, just talking about creating, recently you went to Asia. And I know there's tons of technology there that are like, what? <laughs> what is this? Um, so yeah. can you tell me a little bit about what you did there? Yeah, so I, I took two trips. I took one in uh, January and one in February. Uh, the one in January was... Uh, with Nati, we uh, went to China to uh, visit uh, Pimax. So they have like this uh, high-end uh, VR headset. So we went to Pimax, we visited HTC, we went to the biggest VR theme park wow. of the world. Four, four stories high, it was like absolutely insane. More than so many experiences to try, so many things to see. Um, so yeah, that was with my uh, with my brothers with Nati, and then in February I went to uh, to Japan. I was not really focused specifically on VR, um, but uh, it was really focused on um, like, like I work at the human technology department in the elder care company. Okay. And we're really looking for how can we have a different view and different way of looking at healthcare and elder care um, because we believe there's a lot of things we can improve and innovate and change. Uh, so we took a trip to Japan because they had the, the, the largest largest conference uh, of Japan, like some medical and healthcare expo. Uh, so yeah, they're really advanced, like all the, so many robotics and technologies and different things that they really use. So that was a really interesting trip uh, to go there and to see like, like what they're already doing. And, also, building up a network, what can we learn from each other? Because the, the largest um, aging population is in Japan. So the, wow. the problems we will have in the future and in the States, but also Europe, is already happening in Japan. Wow. Oh, okay. So um, is this your... Can you see this picture? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is this from your trip? A recent trip? I love this. So, so this is... Uh, so, so this is really cool. It's like, uh, oh, oh. it's moving. Um, so this is in um, in the, the Forbidden City. So inside of the Plain uh, And then when I was walking into uh, the Forbidden City, so the, the, the Forbidden City, I don't know if you know it, but it, it's, it's insanely big. And the emperor of uh, China was living there wow. back in the day. Not anymore. So, but I also had a VR experience, and the coolest thing is, uh, I went there with my uh, with my fiance and her family, and they visited the, the Forbidden City multiple times. Um, but the thing is, when you go to the Forbidden City, there are a lot of uh, tourists uh, walking around there. It's it's really big. it's a really popular place to go to, and then they have this VR experience. So we didn't know what experience it was. Because like most of the description was in Chinese, <laughs> my Chinese isn't that great. But uh, so, so we went in, and then you just fly. You just go. You sit, get a seat on a headset. I think that was a was a Pimax, and you sit in the in the seat, and then you start in the the middle of the Forbidden City, and then you kind of fly through, and then you see uh, when it's snowing. Uh, when it's raining, uh, wow. when the, the emperor is there. And, and so you really experience the Forbidden City in a different way you never experienced before. And the funny thing is my, my, uh, my girlfriend's mother, she, she was like, this is so cool because 
I never seen it like you see it like with snow, but but then there's so many people walking around. So it's so cool to just be there kind of alone. Yeah. And just fly around uh, the forbidden city and see it from a different perspective. So it was a really cool, uh, cool experience to uh, to try. So when you when you were in um, all the different places, like what was your favorite experience? Because I I love this photo. This is. Yeah, so this is in Japan. It's, uh, it's like a store uh, where they sell mobile phones. Okay. So the interesting thing uh, with uh, robotics or robots in China is the, the, the adaptation. So for them, like having like, like a pepper, like pepper is not like an innovation. It's of course it's an innovation. It's new technology. But right. They have them in a lot of stores. Wow. So it's very interesting that people just accept that when I go here in the store, maybe I can bump into one pepper or like randomly somewhere. But there's so many stores with like the pepper robot there. And that's already like a big step to get people used to like this new technologies and this new uh, robots. So that's very cool. So you see many stores with pepper, but also other robots to just guide you through the store. And I love how you're looking at pepper like he's... A salesperson you're you're like really he's looking at you and you're yeah. looking at him <laughs> that's hilarious yeah because you can just i i tap like the the tablet mm -hmm. but then it was funny, so I, I didn't understand like he could sell me anything and i could have just said yes wow i mean yeah that's true you know you're like <laughs> what this is crazy the what was this was what was your favorite part would, would you say the the flying over um you know the whole scenery was it the robot was it the technology what, what part of it was was one of your favorites um so around the corner uh, of this this commerce store there is a, a um, it's called the active lab uh, it's like a it's like a public space inside of a big shopping mall okay and in that the public space that they uh, present uh, new technologies that is being made, for example, by students, universities, but also corporations, mm -hmm. and, and they, they display it for the public. So when you walk into the shopping mall, you can just walk in and try the experiences. And there are like people walking around who can give you give feedback to the developer or the university. Wow! And they had this one ex they had multiple experiences, and then they didn't do. But there was this one VR experience, and it was like a like a square table. And you would put a headset on. Oh, here, let's see. It was so it was like, like a, a so it was like a square table. Let's draw it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Square table, and then you put the, the headset on, and it was in the middle was like a Mandela or something, and you would walk around. You put like five tracks on your hands. It was a five pro. So you put your hands on the side. You would walk around the the square. So you wow. would just walk around, and then they said like you put your hand on the middle. And then it would change to a triangle. So in VR, it would change into a triangle, but your hands would still go around. So you would, you would feel a square, but you would see a triangle. So your, your brain would say, hey, this wow. is a triangle. Okay. So you would just walk around and it was like, did it just change the table? No, they didn't. <laughs> How do, what, what did it just do? And then... And and so it was so confusing. And then he was saying like the the University of Tokyo was using that to find ways to uh, wow. improve like uh, like the, the well-being. So he was telling about this this project we were doing for uh, elderly who uh, or it was like, like a test. So if you give somebody like a big cookie and but you give them a small cookie, they have the feeling they're eating a lot. But you can also change the other way around. So you give somebody like a small, like a small cookie, but you give them a bigger cookie. So for example, uh, elderly or people who have problems with like eating mm. and recovering, then you can just like put a VR headset on, and so but somebody will eat more and recover faster than you would yeah. present the food because then they wouldn't get hungry. So That's it's amazing. really interesting, like what they're doing there. Yeah. Wow, that could really help. So that was. Uh, Wait, well, I wonder yeah. if there's any tests. So, but the, it. Tests on that yet? Yeah, so they were testing. It was like really, really early stage. But like with the table already, you could have like, okay, they're onto something. Um, yeah, so they're doing a lot of tests and stuff like that. Wow.
it's unbelievable. So um, how do you like with what you're just jumping into what you're saying about, you know, them just beginning on that? How do you see the future? Let's say even three years, because, you know, people will say like 10 years, three or five years, you know, but, you know, just the future period, maybe in different mm -hmm. tiers. But where do you see it going or growing? You know, how, how do you see it? In, uh... Uh, for like elder care or like in, in social work and healthcare, CPR, I think we need to do something about the interface for sure. Uh, for gamers and people who are into technology, Oculus Home or other uh, like, like like Steam Steam VR, it's it's great. But for the people who are like the power of social VR, we need to find something to limit the, the obstacle hmm. to go into vr and to to use absolutely. it absolutely um already like the go go is already great you put it on the sensor like you put the headset on and the sensor makes it to go on so that's already like a big step for those people they don't have to put a cable in and put a computer on it's just too complicated for them so i think that will be a big improvement in the coming years and you're going to be a part of it content like <laughs> i hope so i hope so a lot of things like in the background going on, a lot of conversations to like improve like uh, that uh, interface, and also like creating content and quality, like find uh, together with them, co-create and find like what are you guys, what are you looking for, what do you want in your life, what, what would add something to your life, and not just like now we just use games that already exist but they have never been made for them. Wow, it's true. Um, so I think that will be a big thing that in the next years. Um, yeah, and hopefully like more standalone headsets, that would be also great because like <laughs> bring like a computer in or that, that's just too complicated. It just needs oh. to be a headset. You put it on, it needs to be like very, very. Easy. I know the, yeah. te the technology so that like the IT side of it can be a bit, you know, but with the go, it's so easy. I mean, you can literally go anywhere. So, <laughs> but the power isn't, True. it's just not as powerful as the rift. So I definitely agree. I mean, the, no, the Quest, the Oculus Quest, hopefully will bring that type of power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, true. And then in the next three years, I really hope, like, I'm also working a lot, like, we work with the elderly, but, like, I also found that there's a big interest for, like, nurses to train them, like, to do, like, like nursing skills, um, but also other, other things. So I'm also seeing the next three years, like a big, big growth in that. And then, like, I see, like, now a lot of people, like, in, especially like in, in hospital care, like, a lot of VR experience popping oh, up. Oh, really? It's very cool. It's also, like, in elder care, yeah. And and so some small experience, but I see something, like, in the next few, maybe three years, like, the bigger picture. So how can we combine the different experiences and have, like, like a big or, like, a, like a, a larger game that you can just play and practice your skills and maybe have just a different way of engagement, different way of learning and being a nurse than we do now. You have to go to the school, you have to read a book. And of course, it's an important part, but how can we make it more engaging? Uh, so that's that's like, I think VR is a big, big one and a different way of learning. You know, and it's different to be looking at it from that perspective, from the, you know, the perspective of the elderly community. I mean, when I think of VR, those were that was the last place I was thinking of for VR, you know, I mean, when I, like elderly, you know, and, um, <laughs> yeah, true. you know, I wonder, I, I saw this picture and I, um, I'm not sure if you could see it, but I know that everyone else can, I'm actually going to put it in the middle. I want it to be bigger. And this is a picture. I showed you this picture when we caught up yesterday of you and your grandparents and mm. you seem to be very close with them. So are they part of the reason yeah. why you've been so interested in this sector of VR? Yeah, so I've been like since I was a child. Like when when my my mother is a nurse. Oh, so also being, okay. Being in elder care, so she works in elder care. So when my brother and I were like little kids, little monsters, <laughs> um, my, my mom had to work night shifts. So then we stayed a lot at my grandparents. So yeah, we spent a lot of time there and seeing them aging and seeing the the world also changing because it it's as you know like like 10 15 years ago we didn't have smartphones and now it's like 
it's a really important thing or important thing. It's like something that's really right. So, like a great example is that my grandparents were saying, okay, because we have like a group chat, the family, Aww. and then they heard all the stories, things were going on. So they were like feeling kind of like left out. Aww. So they were like, how can we also engage like in in WhatsApp and and stuff like? So we bought like a tablet for elderly and uh, so it's like a special tablet they can use um, so and then i really thought like okay my grandparents will be still the generation who will have like great medical care uh, especially like in the netherlands we have a great social system but then there is a big aging population there is uh, an increasing uh, workforce so how can we still keep the level of quality of uh, care like for also like my parents who will grow older later and do i need to take them in my house in the future or will we find like a way with like for example with vr for well-being robotics and other technologies to support the nurses to still get a great medical care because like, like i wanted the best for my my parents and also my grandparents i mean look at this guy is he not the greatest he's talking about his parents and and your <laughs> grandparents and your parents and finding solutions to help them have a better life through VR. I mean, that's like yeah. amazing. You're a good person. VR for good right here. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. It's like yeah, so, so amazing of, what you're doing. Thank you, you know? Um, so if once yes. somebody wanted to contact you, how would they contact you? If they wanted, let's say a nursing home or <clears throat> a nurse or somebody wanted to find out how they could do or incorporate what you're doing into their program, how can they get you on board? Yeah, so you can uh, send me a, a message on uh, Twitter. So it's uh, David Young 90 And you can also always find me on LinkedIn. And you can also find me on Facebook. It's just my full name. And most of the time, I just pop most of the time <laughs> above. Yes. And then I can send me a message. And yeah, yeah I'm really happy to collaborate and talk with other people about uh, elder care and uh, improving the well-being of elderly. Well, thank you so much for joining me and, and jumping on and talking about such a great topic. I mean, you know, our elderly community have so much knowledge and I think that they could be a big part in growing the virtual reality community and making it a better place, yeah. a better world, is, as um, Paige Danzinger, another virtual reality, augmented reality artist, says. But um, mm. thanks again. And um, Nathy, thanks for joining us. He actually put down David's um, Twitter in the comments below. So check it out. Contact him. Um, VR for good. That's what it can be used for. Yeah, thanks. Signing out. And we'll see you. Happy. Oh, by the way, it's National um, Cereal Day. So <laughs> what's your favorite cereal? <laughs> what is your favorite cereal? Uh, I think it's really an American thing. We don't eat really, maybe we eat like muesli. Or yes, muesli. Not really like cereal. That's like that's a real cereal. Yeah, but we we're not this. Yeah, is that a real My cereal? My dad used to eat that cereal. But, uh, I always wanted to think about fru fruity, fruity loops and the, the I don't know. Like you have all this junk. I saw. I, junk. I heard somebody speak about it. Like, uh, yeah, junk. You have like fifty different ones when you go to the supermarket. It's not right? good. It's not good. So I many. Know. Too many, too many choices. <laughs> but again, you know, and what's your my favorite? favorite is Lucky Charms. I love Lucky Charms. Mm -hmm. And Moosley is actually my second. That's my dad. My dad oh, was from Germany. So we always had the cool Moosley uh, always. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But again, <laughs> thank you so much for joining. And here is thank you for having me. David's Twitter handle. If you want to reach out to him or you just want to tell him that he's doing awesome work in vr and making changes for your grandparents your parents and all the people who are older than us that we respect and wishing you a wonderful th yes. wonderful thursday have a great weekend